So this is going to be a little more of a fun video. Um, as an FE or finite element modeler, you don't always have to be the one who develops the models. You can just use them and then cite whoever's making them. And this isn't something sleazy. This is uh, NHTSA, so National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration. Um, they actually have developed quite a few really detailed um, vehicle finite element models here, and I can link this page below. And they're free to download and use. Um, I would read the fine print, but I'm pretty sure you're able to use them in research. So you're actually able to run these and get some results out of them and put your own maybe seats in them or your own human body models or dummies or whatever your lab's doing or whatever you want to do personally. Um, I'm actually not sure you'll be able to run this on your personal computer, but it's fun to look at anyways and open and pre-post. But yeah, so they have a bunch of different uh, vehicle models here that you can just download and you can download by just clicking them. And it's going to take a little bit to download and you just click it. And what you want to do is unzip it, which I've already done here. Um, and it's going to be the title of the car and the year. And you can just go into the folder. And in this case, it's the Silverado and there's two different models. There's a lightweight version and a baseline. Doesn't matter. Whatever you want to go to, um, there's a README and you want to open that because it'll tell you how to actually run the models. So in this case, there's an include file directory titled 00include, which is here. Uh, this directory contains the subdirectories of all the files that make up the Silverado model. So if you go in here, there's a ton of subfolders. And what's going to happen is there's this main folder here, or this main file in here. And this file, if you double click it, it's a .key file, which is the same as a .k file. It's just a different and it's the same thing. And you can open it in a text editor. I'm using CACSEDIT. And um, what you can look at is you have all the database files, all of your controls, and there's a bunch of include files down here, which actually cite subfolders. So it's telling you to go back to the include and then instrumentation and then here in the sensors. And these are all K files that this one file is including. And this is a beast of a FE model. So you can actually open this up and, <clears throat> excuse me, in a pre post, and in order to do that, you can uh, open pre post and you just drag it in to the window. And it's going to take a while, so I already have it open because it took probably two minutes for it to open on my uh, computer. But this is what's going to show up whenever um, you open it, and you're probably wondering where all these light teal uh, dots are. Well, um, I've never actually ran this model, but they are mass nodes. So if you go to select part here in the model uh, subcategory, um, there are mass nodes here, which are, um, it, it's a node, like a single node that distributes a mass among that, ma that node. This is an interesting um, thing that they've done where they've actually put a lot of different mass nodes to distribute the exact weight of the car. So what I'm assuming is they actually measured the weight and distributed the mass nodes exactly like it was in whatever that they measured. So it's really approximate, but I do have to say it's kind of messy looking, but hey, uh, they're NHTSA. But um, so if you want to get rid of that and you just want to like look at the model, you can hit off of the mass here, which is mass nodes or mass elements, I should say. Um, so this is a really good example. I have actually have the mesh off. If you turn the mesh on, <clears throat> it actually looks black from this far away because it's such a fine mesh. Um, but you can turn the mesh off if you want. But I wanted to do a video on this because this is a really uh, good example of um, really, really good modeling techniques. This is a very, very detailed model. Like they even have the, uh, the actual holes for bolts modeled into the, the floor pan. And they have the uh, the radiator modeled out and all the fans, and it's just really cool to me. Like I'm geeking out just looking at this thing. Uh, but you can actually run this. Um, I would estimate it would take you probably two weeks to run this on a local computer because it's very large. Um, if you wanted to look at how big it is in terms of node size, you can go in prepost to the miscellaneous tab here, click View Model Info. 
um, and then I'll tell you how many nodes there are here. So this is 2.8 million nodes in this model, and there are a total of uh, over, over 2 million elements as well. So this is a really, really big model, and here you go, here's your mass elements. 1.7 million mass elements, which is crazy. Um, but so this is a really detailed model, and uh, I know everyone can have a lot of fun just clicking through this, which because I do. But um, some tips to, that you can look through is you can use select part, and you can actually click off of everything and kind of dissect how they're modeling stuff, which can help you in your own research. Um, they're actually gone through modeled like things like the battery. Uh, this is the engine, it's really coarse because it's just a really large chunk of mass in the engine bay, which I'm assuming they're not thinking it's going to deform much, which is why it's so coarse of elements. Um, the tires all have different layers, and they have these beams that are actually defining, um, what are they defining? Lateral tire beam. So if you're curious in prepost as to what something is, you can um, you can click off of it, so like I did, and then you can hit restore, and it'll take you to um, where it's clicking off of. So like it's here. So if I restore, it's gonna move the um, the bar to wherever that is. So that's a useful thing to uh, be able to find what you're looking for. Um, and then once you find the beams, so I wanted to look at these beams. You can hit info and then click here and it'll tell you the section so this is a section beam it's got a form one and thicknesses of two and the material is elastic and it's like in a reinforcement so this is kind of modeling the tread I'm assuming um, and you can do that with anything you can also trim this down more so you can actually look at just uh, solids if you want which believe it or not, this is modeled mainly with shells, but look at all of those bolts. That's just nuts. It's so cool. Um, but this is a neat thing um, to really learn a lot about modeling. If you just grab something and kind of dissect it apart and um, see how they're modeling different things, because we all kind of know how, how a car is built, but this really shows you like the uh, details of how to model a car. Um, if you want to actually like blank a section, you can go to element tool, blank, and it's gonna mask a bunch of elements. Uh, you want element selected, go to area, and then you can click and drag. It's just gonna cut it right in half. And then you can actually look at like the engine with the drivetrain, back to the back axle. Um, and there's even the spare tire model. Um, but on their website, they actually have videos of these models up there. So you can actually like see what it would be, look like if it was run. Um, I don't think there are any in the folders themselves. There's just a picture here. So, um, but I know there are videos of FE models on their website somewhere. Um, I can link that too and mention that, but it's really neat. And this really shows like the full potential of FE modeling because it's really powerful. And, and then imagine what we do is we actually take um, dummy models or human body models and position them in the vehicle in a seat because they don't have seats in this, I'm assuming, because they're just looking at intrusion depth. But you can actually import a seat into here and see what how different seats affect kinematics or injury risk for an occupant. And you can um, include dummy models which are going to be trying to model how a real life dummy works and also human body models, which are trying to estimate how a human volunteer, not a human volunteer, but a human occupant would respond during certain wrecks, um, which is really neat. So um, I just wanted to show this off and um, you can really dive into it if you go into the model tree and it's a keyword and then this really will allow you to look at all of the nitty gritty stuff. So if you find you want to look at, they used an airbag, you can click an airbag and see how they modeled it. So this is a good way to kind of reverse engineer something that you're trying to do with your own work and you can get good modeling practices from here. But um, this is a short video and it was a pretty neat one, but 
um, give me any questions that you have and I can try and see if I can run this and get a simulation for you. But it's pretty neat and I just wanted to share. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.